come out here, gather organic material and literally cast it into metal. So this stuff has actually become my sculptures, not just a subject, but actually my figures are this landscape. It struck me that uh, as at the end of my time here, that maybe I should lose a figure and uh, maybe I should almost make an offering to the marsh. My lying figure, my life-size lying figure, which is pretty much the last sculpture I've made here. I'm going to bring it out, we're going to have a raft, and we're going to take it out to the mud flats and we're going to lower it into the water at high tide. And then I'm going to leave it here to to sink slowly into the mud and really sort of to be forgotten. I suppose in a sense, make a myth. And for me, it really ties up all the loose ends of my time here and also really fits in with the, the work I've been making, which is about this sort of fluidity, this transience. First touch points for me in, in the human body are maps, diagrams and atlases. And often these systems of thinking about the human body, nervous systems, etc., lead me down routes through landscapes. The studio at Butley Mills, all the tributaries of the river and the creek, all really relate for me. Like they feed the landscape, much like veins and vascular systems feed the human body. And it also relates to the way that I can flush bronze around a mould. The lost wax process. I end up with this really lovely sort of triangulation of landscape, process and body. These are wonderful links for me to play with and to work with when I'm sort of constructing ideas about body. I uh, think of my bodies as every man, as every man. I can then use those bodies to experiment with. So I'm creating, in a sense, my own mannequins, but also in a sort of platonic sense, I'm creating my own ideals. It's very interesting when I first, you know, start to think about the human body, I'm in a sort of a Cartesian place, a sort of Newtonian place, a sort of a place which is body as machine. Having got the mechanics of a body sorted out, I try not to value those as much as I do the emotional and the intellectual way that I will approach a body. My bodies up to um, a year ago are always carrying heavy weights and burdened walking uh, with you know, a lot of baggage, in a sense. I was reading Walden the other day, a book by uh, Thoreau, an American writer, and he was imagining what it would be like for the body not to be encased in its, you know, skin. Imagining what it would be like for the body to be free. free of its constraints and, and what its potential would be and how far it would travel and, and what would happen to our mental states if we didn't have this sort of cage that we're living in. In the last body of work that I've created, I've really tried to deal with that idea of, of um, dissipating bodies or moving them uh, away from the states they occupy. I can cut a hole in his chest and the, the piece that comes out I can add to his shoulder. And if I carry on doing that time and time again, the body slowly turns into an environment. And there is a moment when a piece comes out and actually it's like pfft, the whole body disappears into this environment. 
it becomes more than just um, making sculpture, it becomes kind of a, an examination of the state of being. You end up with this sort of sense of transformation, a figure in transit, a figure that's um, on its journey to being something else. It's almost sort of like a sort of physical, cosmic process, really, where this figure is turning into another matter. It reminds me of that wonderful final chapter in the Primo Levi uh, periodic table, where uh, the chapter of carbon. <laughs> carbon is in all of us and that we just borrow it and then we just give it back. It's just a, a temporary let. And I think these sculptures are really all about that actually, about existing one minute and then being gas another. And that really ties up with my process. All the materials that I use in the, in the bronze casting process have at one point or one stage in the process been liquid. Fluidity strikes me as sort of the stalking horse of sort of ideas when it comes to uh, metal casting. You get a feeling of changing states, of, of metamorphosis, of things constantly on the move. Our process is all about yielding the figures, about having a clay original, about offering up into a mould which then becomes a negative space. Air. And then it becomes a solid wax. And then it becomes invested in another mould. And it goes in the kiln and is burnt out. Literally turns into smoke and becomes air again. And then bronze is melted down and then it fills this space and makes it solid again. This is my prone lying man. The figure really came from Mantegna's entombment of Christ. And you've got a view looking up through his chest and up to his chin, and he's looking down over a landscape of body. But it's that view through the feet that I find fascinating. My relationship was not as an equal, which is it's like when you're modelling a normal figure, vertical. It was um, as, a, as a patient. And it was very interesting. I felt more like a doctor or an anatomist or a carer uh, for this figure than I did sculptor. And so when I started to hold its hand, it was almost like I was worried about it. It was almost like I wanted to take its pulse. It was a very democratic thing to make, that everything was on the right height. So the feet had just as much attention as the hands and the head. It, it turned this into a different type of sculpture for me. When I was a kid, the sand burials I was always very aware that they weren't proper skeletons. There was no shields and there was no spears, there was a few buckles, but there was never a body and I always as a kid wanted it to be a body. And I've always kind of thought that maybe I've spent my life trying to make bodies that are more permanent because I didn't have those in the sort of archaeology of this area. The sense that these sculptures will outlive me, uh, the material I've chosen, is something that uh, I, I think about a lot. Not for any sense of heroic sort of um, legacy. When you deal with transients all the time and the fact that you're not going to be here long, one wants to think that maybe there could be clues as to who you were and what you were left behind you. And there's an incredible feeling of, of trying to deal with what you are and what your state is. I mean, the, sort of the ego of the humans is an extraordinary thing, the sort of consciousness that we have. It's a very difficult thing to deal with, really. So today, we're going to go through this extraordinary sort of ritual of taking this figure out into the marsh, hanging him on a, suspending him on a raft we've created, taking him out into the water and lowering him into the water at high tide. 
them. There's a whole history for me in this landscape of bronze. So the idea that the earth has already given back bronze from the landscape and I'm going to put some back in and maybe sometime in the future he may come out again. It's fascinating to me. Uh, it was uh, it was quite powerful actually. I was I was taken aback. I I I wasn't expecting the image of him half submerged. He was bubbling uh, from his head and from his stomach. Bubbles were emitting, and then he sort of glowed a foot underwater. He sort of glowed like a carp, like a golden mirror carp. I felt like I was letting go, literally letting go of something that I really care about. And, um, and then to watch nature devour it in a sense, to watch water bubble around it and to watch it turn into a liquid silver thing, a gold thing, was shocking. This is going to be my new studio and it's really very interesting after all the experiences I've had at Butley, all that incredible nature. I have been looking for a building for five years and I walked into this one and in 10 seconds I said I, I'm, this is me, I've got it, I know what it is that I want to be. The second time I came in, a pigeon was trapped in here, flying around, flapping around, and I thought, God, you know, there's a butterfly in the window at the moment. And there's, you just see nature in a different way. I'm still feeling life forces, so I've got a fear about not finding my way around this in a sort of a natural sense. I'm, I've got my antennae are out, and I'm sort of looking for the clues.